Hello and welcome to another instructional video brought to you by ZappySys. In this video, we're going to cover how to use a custom ODBC Salesforce driver to consume data from the Salesforce cloud. As always, this is a custom component you'll be able to use once you download the ZappySys ODBC Power Pack, and you can get that directly from their website, hovering over Products, ODBC Power Pack, and download the free trial. And I'll be sure to add a link for this in the description below. Okay, so once you have the Power Pack installed on your machine, you can just search for the ODBC UI. And you can either create a user DSN or a system DSN. A user DSN or data source name is only going to be available to the user, my user, when I'm logged into this machine. If it needs to be a DSN that's available to other users or a service account, you would want to create a system DSN. And if you're making a system DSN, you need to make sure you're using the 32-bit or 64-bit UI that is based on your needs. Whenever you make a user DSN, it doesn't matter which one you use, it's available for both. So I'm going to make a user DSN. I'm going to click Add. You'll notice lots of custom ZappySys drivers that are available. I'm going to pick the Salesforce driver and click Finish. So we'll want to give our data source a name. So I'll go with my data. And then you'll want to set up the connection. So the first time you have to go through this, you'll probably have to enter a username, password, security token, etc. I have a connection string copied to my clipboard, so I'm just going to paste that in there. And now I'll show you what the connection settings look like. So you'll see your username, your password, security token. If you're not sure what your security token is, you can use this little handy link to help you generate and retrieve it from the Salesforce portal. You'll want to specify your service type, whether it's production, sandbox, or you can say other and insert a URL. Say right now this is using version 48, but maybe you want to use a different version, you could specify that. All of the rest of the settings are pretty standard, but you have other things for like proxy settings, certificates, etc. But I'm just going to stick with this and I'm going to click OK. So that's really it for setting up a connection. Now we can just make sure that this config works. So I'll click the test connection button and there we go. It does. Great. But what data are we actually retrieving? Well, we can see that on the preview tab. So I'll hop over to that. And you'll notice, hey, there's a very basic query that already populates. So I'll just hit preview data and we'll see up to 100 rows of this data. And there we go. We have some stuff. Uh, we can also use this drop down menu to see all of the tables that are available. And now if I click the, let's say, account table, this is all of the columns that are available in the account table. So if I say preview data, now I'm going to see lots of columns for those 100 rows. If you'd like some help writing your query, you can use this little view examples link and you can see some other options. Or you can hop over to this examples tab and here you can see a lot of helpful and interesting examples, especially for things like SOQL, which is Salesforce's own specific query language. And you can use these links here in these little info pieces for more specific SOQL information. So as you can see, there are a lot of examples for things like parent fields, child records, uh, date time examples, but you'll notice some other features such as external input. So you can take data from an external source and insert it into the Salesforce connection that you have, or you can use it for an ODBC connection. You'll also notice these bulk API inserts and deletes. And these leverage an output setting which will display the data in the preview pane. You can use bulk mode, which uses job style bulk API features for performance. If you're in, let's say you're inserting millions of rows, that will definitely help with performance if you're only dealing with 10 or 20,000 rows, you might not want to enable this feature. Uh, but what if we use an example to show how this works? So let's say, we'll hop back over to the preview pane, we'll delete all of this. 
and I have some code in SQL Server already written. So I have a table called the SF Customers Table, Salesforce Customers, and it has about 10,000 rows, just some sample demo data. So I'm going to copy the rest of that code and I'm going to paste it in the preview editor. So the first thing is we'll run this first line. And as you can see, if I highlight a line and then click preview, it only runs that line. So now we have 100 rows with some demo accounts. Okay, great. So I'm going to delete all the data for those demo accounts. And there we go. We can see the rows are deleted. And it says rows 1,000, even though we have max rows set to 100. So, you know, we could change this max row setting up here, but I have this query just to make sure that all of the rows have been deleted. And there we go. There are zero rows where the name is like demo account. So now we have this cool feature where we're going to insert data into Salesforce. And we're going to get it from this source clause where we have to specify three options. One is our connection type, or our driver, so we're using Microsoft SQL Server. But you could use, say, ODBC, and you could type in DSN equals and your data source name, or whatever your connection string is. So the first one is the driver, the second one is the connection string, and the third field is your external query. So I'm getting that data from our SF customers table in my SQL Server instance. And then we have those other features. So we have output enabled, so we should see the data visible in this little preview pane down here. And we have the bulk mode disabled. We're not using that many rows, but you know, like I said, if you're using millions of rows, you might want to enable this feature. So now let's just run this entire insert statement. And there we go. We see a thousand rows inserted and we see the status down here because we have output enabled. That's how easy it is to read data from a SQL Server instance and then insert that data into the accounts table in Salesforce. So when we're done with all this configuration, we can just say OK. And there we go. Now our ODBC driver is saved for the future use. That's how easy it is to use the custom Zappysys Salesforce ODBC driver to read data from Salesforce and even push data to it from an external data source. Okay, so we've already covered how to create a custom ODBC connection for an API source. Now let's see how to use the data from that ODBC connection in Power BI. So as you can see, I already have an instance of Power BI open, and I'm going to click Get Data. We're using a custom ZappySys connector, so I'm going to go down to Other, and we're using an ODBC connection. So if you had multiple ODBC connections, you'd have to pick the one from the list. That's obviously the one that we made. But you don't have to specify the DSN right there. You can do a DSN less option by just pasting in the connection string. So remember, I'm going to hop back over to our connection. We can use the copy settings feature and actually get that connection string for our API. So I'm going to paste that in there. And if you wanted to go ahead and write a SQL statement for the specific data you're looking for, you could do that. I'm going to leave it blank. And now we see all of the options available for our source. I'm going to use the orders table. And there we have it. You know, we could make something super simple, like order ID by date. You know, we could drag in other tables. You could do whatever you wanted to do in Power BI using this data source. And when you're ready, you could publish the report, schedule a refresh, or you could even install Power BI's data gateway, not to be confused with the ZappySys gateway. But just know that if you use the Power BI gateway, you can't do the DSN less option where we pasted in the string. 
you need to use a system DSN because that gateway uses a service account and that service account needs access to the ODBC connection. But that's it. That's how easy it is to retrieve data from an API source with that custom ZappySys ODBC connection and then using the data in Microsoft Power BI. If you want to give it a try but you haven't already downloaded the ODBC Power Pack yet, go ahead and do that now. And don't forget the link is in the description below. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the ZappySys YouTube channel to get more tips and tricks like this and other updates in the future. <music>